Weekly meetings, special sessions, color schemes and categories. I can't remember a time when we paid so much attention to parliamentary procedure or hung on every word at a board meeting. Last night, two days after their regular bi-weekly meeting, the West Ada School Board decided to get together for a special one to discuss the technical issues they have been having since school started. Three full days of online only learning had resulted for some in just a couple of hours of in-class instruction. So they wanted an update on how those problems are getting fixed, and they also want an update on their readiness to welcome kids back to in-school classes that's happening on Monday. No decisions were made last night. In fact, they decided to save any decisions until their September 22nd meeting. But there was one decision a lot of parents and more than a dozen state legislators were hoping they would make last night. One they laid out in a letter to the West Ada Board of Trustees. About two and a half hours into West Ada School District's Board of Trustees special session, one, Trustee Steve Smiley briefly brought up a letter. I noticed, uh, you know, perhaps some of you others have noticed that there was a, uh, uh, a letter that came later this afternoon from uh, the, the Republican members of the, our district legislative delegation. That letter began with, we realize how challenging the current situation is for board members. It went on to mention the numerous parents, students, and teachers who have reached out, and it wrapped up with, on behalf of the parents and students who want and need to be back in the classroom, we urge you to fully reopen schools for daily in-person instruction. Signed, respectfully, the 13 members of Idaho's legislature that represent voters in the West Ada School District, including State Senator Lori Den Hartog. We have had, I have had so many constituents reach out uh, who have felt like uh, their local school board wasn't hearing them. Den Hartog's kids don't attend West Ada schools, but she didn't put her name to this paper as a parent. I've had a lot of parents who would like to see their kids back in school who are concerned about uh, kids who have special needs, uh, who benefit from being in the classroom. Obviously, all students benefit from being in the classroom, but there is definitely a concern of parents uh, with kids with special needs who felt like they really needed to be there. So I wanted to sign on to help give a voice to those parents who felt like uh, they weren't being heard. As a legislator with a letter to a local school board, is that overstepping your bounds? Uh, so it's pretty common for us to have a lot of constituent uh, feedback and comments and particularly in this in this time too we sometimes it's something that is within our control sometimes it's something that isn't um, but this type of communication was meant as a way to encourage the local school board I don't think it was uh, out of line at all it's pretty common like when we're hearing legislative issues during the session for there to be you know communication to us from local school board members and city councils and county commissioners on you know policy decisions that we're considering too so it certainly is a two-way street however in last night's meeting it seems smiley was feeling like their lane was getting squeezed there's, there's a lot of pressure and uh, I, I think we're, we're feeling it all. You sit on the Senate Education Committee. Yeah. So if somebody like in your stature sent a letter to a school board, when you kind of help determine whether budgets, can, curriculum, all that kind of stuff, can be kind of seen as maybe a little pressure, I think it was intended to place a little bit of pressure in a in a positive way. I, it was meant to be an encouragement. Some of the things we took up in the special session were also meant to address some of the concerns uh, brought forward by local school board members who had concerns about liability issues. And I think everyone is trying to do the best that they can. I hope they take the time to read the letter uh, because it does express a lot of what we have been hearing from parents who would like to see their kids uh, be back in school. Now, Senator Den Hartog admitted they drafted that letter knowing things were about to change within the West Ada district, that school was about to start on a hybrid alternating day schedule. And she doesn't envy at all the position school board members have been put in because of the pandemic. But she feels the board's delay in deciding what they were going to do put a lot of parents in a tough position too. Do I need to quit my job to help my kid learn from home? Can I afford to do that? Or do I need to hire somebody else to do it? Which is why Senator Den Hartog said they went ahead with the letter because they still wanted their parents' input to be heard. But one West Ada parent who was listening in on last night's meeting still doesn't feel like she was heard. Katie Keene is the mother of two West Ada students, and she didn't appreciate the way 
The letter, which she says absolutely reflects how she is feeling, was not even read as part of the public record last night. The way that was said was the Republicans sent us a letter that's just added pressure. It got pushed off to the side. You don't feel like they're listening to you? Absolutely not. Nope. I don't think from day one they have listened to any of the parents or students. Their mentality is we decided to go with this yellow model that we've set up weeks ago. So mm -hmm. we're going to stick with it. What would mm -hmm. you like to see them do? Um, I would like to see them send the kids back to school with safety precautions in place full time. So you appreciate those legislators putting that letter together? Absolutely. They listen to the people. I came five years ago from California a state where it fell apart because nobody listens. We moved here for a better life for our kids and for our legislatures to listen to the people. And I feel like they did that. And the school board brushing over that letter last night and the public not knowing what that letter says is a disservice. And we tried to speak with the West Ada School Board today, and we were told their work commitments wouldn't allow it. But we are hoping to hear from them soon. And if we do, well, then so will you. As it stands right now, schools in West Ada will start with in-person classes on Monday as or with, uh, as we mentioned, a hybrid, kind of an alternating day schedule kind of thing. And they're going to continue to work on their connectivity problems for their district devices, something they will address at their next special session coming up on Tuesday afternoon. And according to that agenda, they're also supposed to take a look at the revised opening plan.